Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you really quickly about setting up Zoom inside of Schoology. So if you watched my previous video, you know that Schoology already has a feature built into it for video conferencing called Conferences, which is very simple to use. Um, so I've started out already in one of my courses. If you don't remember how to get into a course in Schoology, please let me know and I'll help you with that. But we've already started out in this course. So if you remember, conferences is built in right on the left. So you can click on it and as soon as it opens, you can go ahead and create a new conference and you're ready to go with video conferencing. Now, I really do like conferences. However, there is one big flaw with it that people are pointing out and it's really not a flaw. It's, it's a design choice. The problem is if you are trying to allow students or other people in the video to see each other, um, conferences isn't going to work for you. It's a design feature that they've set up so that the students can't do things inappropriate and you can't see those screens. Now, that doesn't mean the student can't see the instructor and the instructor can't see the student. They can, but students can't see other students. Uh, one of the ways we're using this is staff meetings currently. Staff can't see other staff. They can only see the presenter. The presenter can see everyone in the classroom, but they can't um, see each other, like users can't see each other. Again, it's not really a flaw, it's a, it's a design, it's a safety feature intended for schools because you can get into some legal issues if students do inappropriate things with each other um, on video. But that being said, there is another option and I wanna show you how to use that today. If we go over to the materials section under a course and you go to your add materials, you'll see your normal uh, items here that you're always used to. Add assessment, add text, test quiz. Um, I said assessment up here, this is assignment, assessment. Anyways, you get the point. You've got all these different options that you can add to a course. The one that we haven't really used a lot is this add file link or external tool. Um, and we can do several things with that, but what I wanna focus on is this external tool. That's where we're going to find Zoom. So what we're going to do is click on that and you're going to get a pop-up box that says file link external tool. We're going to click on external tool. Give it a second to load and you'll be brought to this screen. Now, if this looks confusing, don't worry. I've already set everything up for you. There's two things that we really need to do on this to get it working though. Up top where it says tool provider and it says automatic, we want to change that you'll see a whole bunch of options here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to Zoom and you'll see everything goes to custom. Now, these are already set up, so there's no need to click on anything here, but we do have to give this a title. And this is a title that the students are gonna see and you're gonna see. So we can call this um, Web Meetings, or we can call it Zoom or we can call it whatever we want. This is just a title that you and the students are going to know what it is because you're going to click on it like you do on the conferences button on the left hand side. So we'll call this web meetings. That way it's very clear what we're going to do with this. And we're gonna hit submit. Once that's done, you're going to be given this item right here. So it's gonna have the name that you chose, in this case, web meetings. It's gonna have these double ruler things here, uh, these angle rulers. Um, that's kind of the symbol it's gonna do. To start a new Zoom meeting, all you have to do is click on that title. It's going to launch and you're gonna see all your meetings that you have. Previous meetings, upcoming meetings, personal meeting rooms, recorded things that you've done. There's also a training option over here if you want to go in to do Zoom training. But at this point, I think most everybody's done Zoom. Um, so what we're going to do is just schedule a new meeting. Okay, so in this schedule a new meeting, there's a few boxes that we need to talk about. The topic, this is whatever you want the title of your meeting to be. So maybe this is section one or math meeting, whatever you want. Description, it's kind of self-explanatory. You don't have to put one in, it's optional. But this is what this, this meeting is going to be about. Again, not required. The when, again, this is more informational stuff um, as far as duration, time zone. 
these are these are informational boxes okay they're not required you can start a movie uh, meeting before these times but it does help students to know and other people other staff members to know when this meeting is supposed to take place so I recommend go ahead and entering something in here so we'll just leave it right here at three o'clock uh, on April 1st duration how many hours how many minutes time zone is this reoccurring meeting do you want to set this up every week for the same time if you do you can check that box and guess what by checking that we can go ahead and say how often we're going to do this so if you're setting up weekly staff meetings or weekly meetings with the students you don't have to come in and recreate these all the time registration would mean they'd have to actually confirm you'd have to check it out we don't need to do this part since we're doing it inside of Schoology um, they're going to have to click on that link to see it anyways video we can add for host and participant so we can choose who has video we can say only the host has video or everybody has video how we're going to join now this is not just us this is everybody by default I would leave it both in case someone does need to join this you can require a meeting password so this is a key code that they have to enter in order to get into the meeting again if you're doing this through Schoology this really isn't necessary you're not going to advertise this link on the web other than inside the course and students can't get inside the course unless they're already a member so therefore this isn't really needed enable join before host this is a nice option maybe the students going to try to log in early uh, maybe there's an issue with zoom or an issue with Schoology um, like you've seen the past few days with everybody getting hammered real bad sometimes the website's not down but it takes a couple tries to get in you can say yeah if they want to do that they can join before me okay um, so that is an option mute participants on ent entry so if we don't want them to talk and enable waiting room this is a brand new feature they just rolled out uh, which basically gives you the ability to choose who can and can't go in and out of sessions again if this was a public session waiting rooms would be amazing because then you can't just have some random person join your session um, and bomb your session um, but that's what this is for now I've seen this work in our favor and work against us sometimes a student shows up late and if there's a waiting room and you don't pay attention while you're talking then they won't be able to get in until you approve them so it's a nice feature now I will say this even though this is run through Schoology the web link is still actually a zoom web link so people can get in it's just a lot harder because they have to guess your code to break into your session so again you could always put a waiting room on or you could always require a password I think that's excessive right now um, I really doubt we'll have too much of a problem with it so that's you know that's up to you though and then record the meeting automatically to your local computer so by default uh, zoom will automatically record your meetings anyways this is going to actually download that file to your computer after you're done if you want that feature that's fine keep in mind it will take up some hard drive space so you need to clear those meetings out so if you download a video make sure you upload it to Google Drive um, once you're done that way you can get it off of your computer itself alternative host this allows you to put in email addresses to let someone else also be a host take control share their screen things like that again not really necessary for a, a standard Schoology uh, zoom meeting so we'll just go ahead and click Save once we have it done it's going to just verify everything again it gives us a link because like I said this is an external link where we can send these out to people but people can log into Schoology and find it as well um, so if you're going to send out links or post them somewhere I really would recommend putting in some kind of I, um, passcode so that it's required and now be careful how I ship that passcode just to keep everything safe okay and then once we're done we'll just start the meeting once we start the meeting you'll see real quick that you have your upcoming meeting it'll show as available and we can just click over on start to start it please note this says show my course meetings only uh, if you have multiple courses or if you're enrolled in other people's courses like for instance for staff 
it'll show other uh, Zoom things as well. So that you may need to mess with that. You may not. Um, you got previous meetings, meetings that were open before, and that's pretty much it. Cloud recordings would be videos that have been uploaded. Now, I have not played around with this a whole lot. Um, I did test it, make sure it's working. But once that's done, we'll just click Start. Now, you're going to get a pop-up box that asks you to download Zoom. Okay, So you have to click Allow to download this, and then it will open a separate Zoom app, and you will run Commit. So this can run from any devices, phones, Chromebooks. I did enable it for Chromebooks so the students can actually run their Zoom meetings. So all we're going to do is click Allow. Now you'll notice it says we're going to join. We can join with computer audio, or we can do uh, we can actually test the speakers or microphone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and join with computer audio here. This is going to mess up the volume in the video, so if there's a slight volume difference, um, you're going to know why. But I'll mute myself and see if we can correct that. Okay, so I am in. Over on the left, I'm going to click the mute button, and now I'm muted. The reason I'm muted is there's no other participants in the screen right now, so I'm not really talking to anybody, and it does affect the volume of the computer because, again, I'm doing a live video recording while I'm doing a streaming video, um, but, you know, that is what it is. So right here you have a start video, which will allow you to turn on and off your webcam. I'm going to turn it on, turn it back off. That video looked really bad. The reason it looked really bad is because I am in my bedroom, laying in bed, doing this video for you, uh, and the lights are all out. It's pretty dark because I was watching TV, and then I thought I needed to make this video real quick. So I jumped up and did it. So long explanation, video looked bad because I'm not sitting in a, in a nice room. But that's something that could happen to some of the students, too, depending on where they're at when they're doing this video. Okay. You have an invite button to invite participants. Again, since this was done inside Schoology, you shouldn't have to do that. But if you need to invite an outside participant to the meeting, maybe you have someone talking from a college or somewhere else that you want to invite, you can actually do that. You can manage participants. So if we click that button, you'll see a list of all the participants. You notice you got mute, unmute, and you got some other items here that we can adjust. I'm going to click that button again just to get rid of that side box. We've got a share screen icon. So if I click share screen, it's going to say allow. I'm going to go ahead and share this. Now, this is something that you may get on your Mac computer. Open system preferences, security, and privacy to grant access. To do this, we're going to go ahead and say OK. It's going to pop up to the privacy tab. Now, if you're wondering where that's at, if you ever need to get to it, if you go back to your home screen, you'll actually see something that says security and privacy of your, sorry, home screen of your system preferences menu, you'll see security and privacy. Under the privacy tab, you have this um, screen recording option down here. This is what it's talking about. Zoom needs to have access. Now, a lot of times you can just check this box and it's gonna say quit now to, to actually start working. A lot of times this is a secret. A lot of times you could just click later and it'll work anyways. Um, Sometimes that's grayed out. If that's grayed out and you cannot check that box, you need to come down to this padlock and unlock it. All you do is click on it, type in your password for your computer. This is your login password. And then go ahead and check that box. Okay. Um, if you can't see that at all, usually in this case there's not, but if I go to full disk access, you'll notice there's a plus button. We can click plus. And we can go down and find the program in our applications folder and just simply add that. Now, I'm going, not going to do this um, because I actually don't want that to have access. But that's what it's talking about. So once we close this up, now I should be able to share my screen. And you'll notice I see a picture. And I can say share. And now we can go ahead and, and, and do this. Now, see, it's, it's going to pop up again on me. Uh, so I'm just going to close out. It's already done, as you can see. And notice, I didn't have to quit Zoom to make it work. It always says that, but it's really not always true. A lot of times you can get away with not doing it. But now you can see my entire screen. So if I go up here and start changing items, like I go to msn.com, for instance, you'll see that I'm going to msn.com. Okay. Once I'm done sharing the screen, I can click Stop Share. 
Now, keep in note, if you use things like Active Inspire, Promethean, PowerPoint, any of those things, you can actually just share your entire screen. Um, if you hover up top, you've got some buttons. One of those is Annotate. So we have some features here with mouse. We can use the mouse. We can use Select. We can write text. We can do very, very different things on here. If I click Draw, I'm just going to click a line. And notice I can annotate right over my screen. Okay, So that's what that is for. So I'm going to click Annotate again. Let's clear this. Clear all my drawings. Now I'm going to stop my sh screen sharing. So I can either pause it if I want to keep talking and just leave that on there, or I can stop it entirely. So I went ahead and stopped my screen sharing. You have a chat fun function where you can click on that and you can start chatting with people. You can say it's to everyone. You can upload files. Notice you got your computer and Google Drive would be the big two for our school. You've got a record button where you can record your sessions. Now, by default, this will record anyways. Um, but if you want to make doubly sure it records, you can click record. You can say record without audio because I'm muted. That's the reason it's saying that. Or unmute myself. So if I'm recording right now, even though I'm talking, it's not going to hear anything because I'm currently muted. Again, I did that because I'm recording this video for you. Um, so that's why this is this is that's why that's there. I'll mute myself and then we'll go back and mute myself again and stop the recording. Okay, so that's a basic rundown of Zoom in case you want to use Zoom inside of Schoology. Again, the students will have to install an add-on on Chrome for it to work. They can use Zoom from their phones or any of their other devices. So if you find out the conferences is not working for you and you want to use Zoom, it's perfectly fine to use Zoom. Okay. The one big catch with Zoom, so conferences you have the issue where students can't see other students, okay, or staff can't see other staff. Zoom is going to allow them to do that, which can get you in problems. So just be careful about that. But the other big problem with Zoom is because of the demand on Zoom, Zoom is an amazing, amazing feature, and I don't want to take anything away from it, but because of this huge demand, everybody knows Zoom now. They didn't before couple weeks ago but now everybody knows what zoom is because of the huge demand on zoom zoom can get laggy it can the video can stutter the audio can stutter a whole lot um, it can cut in and out it's just because the demand is so high right now long term zoom is going to be amazing short term uh, conferences is probably going to be a little bit more stable for you however there is that drawback. So if you do really want the kids to see each other, um, then Zoom is the better option. Now, keep in mind, in conferences, if you use the breakout groups where you're putting kids in groups, um, and if you need help with that, let me know. But if you're using breakout groups, they can see each other. They absolutely can. It's only when you're in the class, full class setting that they can't see each other. So that would be the two big differences. If you want to use conferences, great, it's there. If you want to zoom, use Zoom, it's there as well. The big difference is where you go to access it. Conferences is going to be on the left-hand side of Schoology. I'm just going to close this out. I'll click on End Meeting here, End Meeting for Everybody. Um, and you'll see that it automatically popped up and asked me if I want to save this file. I don't want to save this file. But if I did, it would be available for, for use of other places. Okay. So I'll just close those out. But notice right here, conferences is on the left. If I'm going to do a Zoom meeting, I'm going to go to materials, and my Zoom meeting is under my materials section. So you might want to post that to your students. Um, I believe, I believe you might even be able to share it in here. Now, I haven't tried that yet, so I will test that, and I will email you if I find out that I am wrong. But I think you can actually even share that resource on the post but if nothing else it would be a good idea to go ahead and, and write an update that says uh, you know we will have I ain't gonna actually type it we'll have a uh, web meeting today or next Wednesday at 3 o'clock make sure you go under the material section of Schoology and just click on the web meeting link okay if you have any questions as always let me know and I will do my best to answer them thank you so much bye